a job. This is the way it was. This fight, videotaped earlier, round three. Is back to you in the light trunks is Wilfredo Gomez, now to the left of your screen. And the other fighter in the purple trunks, or dark trunks, is, of course, Carlos Mendoza. From Panama City, a surprising fight. It was in this round that he began to put things together to the surprise of Gomez. Gomez's confidence was clear. We saw Gomez back in Munich, West Germany, in the 20th Olympiad. He did not win the gold there, but he has come on to be one of the most feared fighters, inch for inch and pound for pound in the ring, a man of almost savage fury. But Mendoza took the best that Gomez could throw in the first two rounds. And there, a caution from referee Richard Green to Gomez about Buck. Now that undercut of Gomez's proved to be his most effective blow. Holding the head forward, Mendoza was a sucker for the uppercut, and yet you saw him staggered right there, slipped so many punches. Here he took the best that Gomez could throw, and he survived it, and he would come back against it. Gomez at this point appearing to be an easy winner, but it didn't prove to be that way at all. Not at all. This was the third round. You saw that uppercut. Thrown with the right and then with the left. Gomez, one of the few fighters who can throw. Now, now you see Mendoza coming back. Using the left jab. Getting off the ropes. Gomez, one of the few fighters who can uppercut effectively with either hand. Now, there was Gomez backing off to take a break. One suspected he might be growing arm weary at that point. He had thrown so many punches. Mendoza simply refused to buckle under. Then, the third round finally would come to an end. Mendoza would come out for the fourth round, which we will show you. Taking the pummeling right there was Mendoza. This was round three. Remember, videotaped earlier. Here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Super Band and Weight Championship of the World at Stake. You just saw Mendoza get in a good left. After all the beating he had taken, he was coming back, getting the left in there against Gomez, who had to have been surprised at this point, anticipating an easy victory. But the little Panamanian had won 24 of his last 25 fights, had in his record fought Five different champions. Tough duck. The third round ended. Then as the third round ended, here in Las Vegas, Nevada, between rounds, Gomez appearing totally confident. One of the best balanced fighters I have ever seen. Chris, you watched this fight with me. At that point, how did you feel about it? Well, I always remembered that uh, Mendoza had been knocked out eight times in a lengthy career and whose record is not accurate, but as you said, had won 24 of the last 25 and all but won by knockout. But I became a believer when I saw that he was up on his feet all the time like he was walking on eggs. He knew how to move. He was not an easy target to hit for uh, the champion. And the champion, as you'll see a little bit later on, became very frustrated. And you'll see a swollen area over his left eye. And it's probably good that he did take him out in the 10th round because Mendoza is one of the toughest, lighter division fighters we've seen in a long while. All right. We saw signs of Mendoza taking the best of Gomez in the third round and beginning to come back. Now, fourth round action. And watch the way Mendoza began to come back in this one. He stunk Gomez with that left he had just thrown. Gomez beginning to look at his opponent with a new respect in this round. Remember that this man, Gomez, has had 26 fights, 25 victories, 25 KOs, one draw. But right there, you saw Mendoza beginning to get combinations in against Gomez. And it was then that we first began to see a puffiness over the left eye and around the left eye and the upper left cheekbone of Gomez. Mendoza 
See him staying out of range. Gomez trying to work to the midriff to weaken Mendoza and bring his guard down. As you see the graphic, and as we have told you, this was videotaped earlier. Fourth round action. Gomez missing with his blows now. Mendoza going to the belly. Did you see that, Chris? Yes, and Gomez in white at 122 pounds, which is the super bantamweight limit. Earlier in the week, Howard, he had weighed 128 pounds. So we thought at this point that maybe because he had to shed six to get the limit in a championship fight that he was weak. But he punched himself out, as we both know. And a Mendoza, uh, just a tough, tough bantamweight. Well, what you viewers just saw was Gomez pinioned against the ropes and Mendoza hitting him with combinations, clearly winning the fourth round. And after the fourth round was over, going into the middle rounds, Mendoza held his own and more. Most of us had the fight even going into what turned out to be the final round, but we will see for ourselves what happened. This the fourth round. You will see the eighth and ninth rounds, and then the wrap-up in the tenth round. The crowd loved this fight. The crowd, by the way, still stunned by the rapidity and the abruptness of Sugar Ray Leonard's first-round knockout of Andy Price. Mendoza getting the left in. Maybe you can see the puffiness now in Gomez's left eye. There has been blood and is blood now from the left nostril of Gomez. At this point, it was a different Gomez from the cocky fighter who began the fight and cleaned up in the early going. We're approaching the end of this round. Videotape earlier. We'll be back for the later rounds in a moment. We're back for the fight held before we took the air. This is videotape. Fight fought earlier. We've seen the third and the fourth rounds. The comeback of Mendoza in the early <laughs> middle rounds. Mendoza was plaguing. Gomez, that eye got tighter and tighter, more and more swollen. This eighth round action. At this point, you could see that Mendoza was an emboldened fighter. He was no longer that respectful of Wilfredo Gomez, which in the long run may have proved to be his 10th round undoing. The referee was Richard Green here in Las Vegas. Fights are scored by three judges. The referee, no voice in the score. In the eighth round, try and note, if you will, that left eye of Gomez. Notice how Mendoza at this point was picking off Gomez's blows with his glove because Gomez's arms had grown kind of leaden, seemed kind of heavy. The crisp, sharp punching of the early rounds seemed to have vanished. And behind this, behind this, we could hear the press who and ah, as they themselves found it hard to believe that Mendoza was putting up the battle that he was. I am told by my producer, Chet Forty, that we will not have time to show you the ninth round where Mendoza dominated. Look at that, left and a right. And I told you he was an emboldened fight. But we will take you to the tenth round so that you can see the stunning comeback of Gomez. There is Gomez totally on the defense. And a now confident Mendoza, feeling he had taken control of the fight. And indeed he had was giving it to the very great fighter, Wilfredo Gomez. Now, there, I told you that Gomez's most effective blow was the uppercut, because as you look at the fight posture of Mendoza, that head is forward and is wide open for the uppercut at close quarters. And how Gomez can throw the uppercut. But still, you see Mendoza scoring a larger number of blows in this fight and clearly winning the round. At this point, nobody could believe what they were saying, right, Chris? No, but they were aware that Mendoza on the right of your screen had fought five world champions, much more experienced than the champion in white, Gomez. But Gomez, you think he annihilated, demolished Zarate, another champion. And here he was having trouble with this club fighter, but what a challenger. He really was. What a challenger. What a right.
back right there. His slow motion of Mendoza landing, scoring some good punches coming right up. That was Gomez in the corner. And you see the left eye, half the size of the right. Now watch. Look at that right. And notice where it went against the damaged left eye. Then the left to that nostril from which blood was drawn. All right. We'll return with more boxing action. Round 10 of that fight, Mendoza against the champion. After this message and a word. All right. This was the start of the 10th round. At this point, my unofficial scorecard had Mendoza hit by a point. Michael Katz, for instance, of the New York Times, had Mendoza behind by a point. Subjective is scoring and fighting, of course but everyone knew it was an amazingly close fight. Now this, the 10th round. Watch closely because, as I said earlier, Mendoza had become a confident fighter, maybe too bold, and that may have been his undoing because Gomez is so very great indeed. Now, right there, a little bit of apparent controversy, a suddenly developed slick in the back of the glove. Everlast glove, of course. See that? The finger went into it. There it was. Now the slit had become a hole. And they elected to do nothing about it. Richard Green tried to push it down, Bosch. And that was the turning point of the fight. Because what? Suddenly, Gomez became a tiger, and you saw that finishing right. It happened so suddenly, it startled the entire crowd. Mendoza getting up. Richard Green checking the glove. Blood coming from Gomez's left nostril. But now Mendoza was ready to go. He had felt the full, savage fury of the fists of Wilfredo Gomez. It had taken until the 10th round, at a time when Gomez seemed the more weary, but drawing upon his inner resources, fired away relentlessly. And there was the right, and then the left. But the right in there first did the heavy work, as it did on the first knockdown. And this was it. He was game, but the legs were rubbery, the eyes were glazed, and Richard Green, was ready to stop it, elected not to, but right here, defensive against the four-strand rope designed for the protection of the fighter. Gomez was at Mendoza again. So he had two knockdowns in the fight. And Richard Green, one would wish that he would have stopped it here and now. He still let Mendoza go on. Gomez pummeling him at will. Mendoza staying upright on incredible nerve alone. Finally, the referee stopped the fight. A 10th round TKO just before the round would have ended. Now we're going to show you in just a couple of seconds, we'll be showing you there was Gomez receiving the victory and he was a tired Gomez who had again punched himself out, Christopher. No question about it. But he was happy to have this one under his belt. He really was. His corner, I've never seen such a worried corner because they knew that he had thrown his best punches from both sides of that bantamweight body at 122 pounds, and it had to be somewhat depleted by dropping that weight over a two-day period, Howard. But he, he knows only one thing. As he has often said, when I get in the ring, I don't read the rule book. I just fight. Because he had some low bows, he throws them from everywhere. But what's up? What's next for him now? Would it be Danny Little Red Lopez? I, I believe so. Little Red is here tonight. Right. I think for the very purpose of scouting Gomez. Now here in slow-mo, the first knockdown. Look at that right. And the left missed, but it wasn't needed. And that was knockdown number one. This was knockdown number two. Mendoza missing. The right did it. The left finished it off. And so it was a complete...